So in the recent update, Nijiku actually changed how the Juggernaut worked. So now they bounce off walls more, apparently, according to the patch notes. And, well, we're going to try on a map that allows the Juggernaut to bounce off a lot of walls. And, well, that's Hedge. And we're going to do, I think, Impoppable is nice. But basically, we're going to stretch the Juggernaut to the limit. And by that, I mean, we're going to have a bunch of Juggernauts bouncing off walls, essentially. Of course, we got to start with a Juggernaut or a Spike Bolt. Because I think it works with Spike Bolts as well. Because you see on Hedge, like, all four, or all across the map, there is a wall. So, now the Juggernauts bounce off the walls a little bit better, so you'll see. 3-0-0 I think is good enough for now. Let's play. Watch what happens. Actually, no. It doesn't work for the Spike Bolt. You gotta get a Juggernaut first. Never mind. For now, we need to survive with Dark Monkeys. So yeah, we're basically going to upgrade, or we're going to get a 5th tier on top side, and then we're going to get Gwendolyn. Again, all the buffs in the world you can think of. Alchemist, Gwendolyn, Primary Training, I think that's all actually. Those three buffs, and then you're going to see how much damage that thing does, because the fact that, you know, they bounce everywhere. It's going to get nutty real, real, real quickly. So it's kind of a bad spot for the Juggernaut, just because, you know, generally, when you think Juggernaut, you want it shooting down a straight line, but... The fact that it bounces off walls, you actually don't need that. In fact, it's probably better if you don't have it on a straight line, just so it can bounce everywhere. Also, Hedge is not the only map where this can work. I believe it also should work on cornfields, if you don't remove the uh, corn. High finance too, I believe, but yeah. Hedge is probably better, just because if you remove the corn and cornfields, they don't bounce as much anymore. Basically, any map with a border that has walls around it, the hell is that spot? Nice bug. Okay, we can get it now. 4 zero, 0 and watch. Watch it bounce off walls like that. It only bounces off once or a couple times only. You see? I believe it's distance travel until it stops, but there you go. It starts to bounce off walls. Not infinitely. That would be OP and broken. As you can see, right now it's still leaking because it's not that OP. At least not yet. If you want to be OP, you gotta get like more of these, so... Let's get more than one Juggernaut, because clearly one ain't enough. Because I definitely saw it bounce back, but it did not do damage. You see that? It's not actually applying two layers, or sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, yeah. Like, it's missing some balloons, and sometimes it hits it. Maybe the hitbox is, like, a little off. Doesn't hit the same balloon multiple times. Okay, that makes, that makes more sense. Okay, so that's why. So it's not whiffing on purpose, it just... Doesn't affect the same blue twice, I see. Either way, it's still going to be pretty fun to see. I guess that's where you're, if spamming the entire map with Juggernauts would be a little bit more practical. Or more powerful, instead of just getting one Juggernaut. So, the mob is going to be an issue, I'll tell you that. However, we do have the MK that does... That makes the uh, spikes do, uh, I think, 3x damage to mobs. So, that'll help a little bit, but not that much, really. Okay, I think it's time. We're gonna start buffing the Juggernaut now. And I'm not sure if this is enough, but I'm gonna drop a 3 0 Ak when round 40 starts. And we'll see how much damage it does after. It's gonna be hard to break the ZMG layer or the Mob layer. Let me just see how close we get. Come on, Alchemist. Plus Juggernaut. I don't think it's enough, no. Well, it is, but not quite. Not quite. Alright, this is definitely a, a lot better. And we use Gwendolyn now. Oh, the fire missed. Fuck. Let's just get a couple more uh, spikes. One crossbow too. And call this round an end. No, it's not going to work. Fine, how about triple darts? As weird as it sounds. Just for the Moab, that's it. That's all I ask. And how does that do? A lot better, I think. Alright. There we go. Round 40 complete. Just a little bit of a roadblock. And now, uh, if we ignore these triple darts, we should go back to getting an OP Juggernaut. So, time for the Alchemist buff. And yeah, why not top it off with the primary training? That's basically the max you can get. This guy buffs you. And then, of course, this, this upgrade after, but yeah. Primary training gives this guy more radius, more range, more pierce, projectile speed. Very nice. 
You need a vengeful monkey god to buff it. Yeah, I know, I know. But that's a little bit out of my uh, income zone. And just for a little bit more help for Moabs. Yes, we're gonna use Juggernauts for Moabs. As crazy as it sounds, the MK to give this guy more mob damage does actually help a decent amount, so. Let me just add one more Juggernaut to the mix. And hopefully we can save up for this guy now. Ultra Jug. And Ultra Juggernaut. Bye. And now we got even more. Even more Juggernauts flying everywhere. Because I believe this upgrade, when it shoots, yeah, you get a bunch of like Juggernauts explode out of it. So even more bouncing Juggernauts. You see that? Oh man. And now this Juggernaut's going to go from completely garbage late game to actually pretty good late game. You'll see. Does 3 damage to BFBs, but look at this. Now that's attacking. Oh my god. Look how fast it's getting taken down. This thing is not known for popping uh, more class balloons, but with the MK and with all these buffs, it's now a more pop juggernaut. I mean, probably this isn't going to sell the 90s for sure. Definitely not. So we're going to need a little bit of backup. And actually, what better backup is there then? Maybe, maybe we should stall the ZMGs or the balloons as, as long as we can, and then... We just let this guy uh, wreck shit, basically, and so like, Sabo? We'll do Sabos, Mob Clues, all that. You got no towers on the right side, but you still got spikes going back here, so in case any balloons get really far, there's still a, ch there's still a chance we can save it, with the occasional Juggernaut going back and forth. See him bouncing across like this, these areas, these middle areas. And ZMG time. Let's see how long it takes. This three damage at a time, I feel like might need a little more. Gwen is not level 17 yet, but once we get 17, oh, they're gonna do a lot more damage. It feels like, yeah, 10 damage every time the uh, Juggernaut goes through it. See how it goes up in increments of 8 sometimes? Or 7? Giant Spike Ball splits twice into 6 Juggernaut Balls. So I feel like these 6 Juggernaut Balls, they do 7 damage, and then the main one does 10. If I'm not mistaken, because you see this? It's either increments of 7, or... 10 for the ZMG. Also, oh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be really close. Ceramics are going past into this area, but how about them secondary balls, guys? Them secondary balls. Would this strategy work on chimps? Uh, no, because the MK is actually what enables the Juggernaut to do that much damage to Moabs. It's basically triple damage, by the way, so don't try this on chimps. I'm telling you now. You need Monkey Knowledge to beat this. Or you're gonna do a lot worse. When's the next hard round? I don't know, 95? Definitely 95 at least. Let me get a Call to Arms too. Just in case we need it, we can just make the Juggernaut even stronger. And we basically hit the cap. Once balloons get past this bend, that's when it gets a little scary just cause, you know, you can't always rely on the Juggernaut, the Juggernaut's balls, when getting this, the right side of the map here. It's kinda iffy. Anyways, 93, no issues. Thanks to Mob Blue. Sometimes the Juggernaut misses the ceramics. And that's why, folks, it's not gonna work. Let's just use Gwen's ability. How's that gonna do? Okay. We need some defense now, looks like. Because now it looks like we're letting up. Yeah, let's get a Bloon Solver just in case any ceramics get past here. 4 0 2 for now, actually. Liquefier. Let's buff these three these three juggernauts at the front with a little bit of Alchemist buffs. So a 402 here. I mean, yeah, they don't slouch either. 82k. So let's see if this round we have to use a sabotage, but because right now, looks like the answer is uh actually call arms first. Maybe you just need a little bit uh 50% more juggernauts is what we need. And that's all, potentially. That is a lot of ceramics, a lot of DTs. Okay, 95 cleared. With Juggernauts as our main palm power. Actually, whoa. Hold on there. We got one little ceramic, sneaky ceramic leaking by. That's why it's a little iffy, just relying on this one Juggernaut. Yeah, what do you say to adding Super Brittle, just to make the process a little faster? So like this. 5 zero, 2 I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2. Basically supporting the Juggernaut in any way we can. Making the balloons weaker, making the mobs weaker. Oh, these these uh, ceramics are getting really far. 
We need to Sabo. We need to use everything, honestly. Let me see if, uh... Let's see if these Juggernauts on the river right side of the map can help kill the rest of the Serams. Use my abilities a little late there, but we're fine, we're fine. It's high for 98, the death round. How much damage can this do in one round? We got 744 starting the round. We're still close to a million, guys. Let's see if this round can uh, propel us that much. Alright, how are we doing so far? Up to 817k now, wow. Almost 100k in one round, and counting. Yeah, more than that, we're gonna eclipse it. And let's use Sabo again, just to give it even more time to pop these uh, Moabs, BFBs, everything. Jesus Christ. It's gonna get over 150k in one round. All from one tower. One tower that we all thought was useless in, in the late game, but no. Apparently not anymore, now that we have uber buffs. And the best possible map for it too. Let me just sabble that, a little scary. Too fast for me, I think. In fact, uh, wow. Let's use a call to arms for that. Might have been a little late, honestly. And a sabble too. And Gwen. There is one Rico Ceramic, can we get a lucky Juggernaut bounce? Come on Juggernauts. It's not making it, no. Oh, so this is, the, this is the one round where we gotta restart this one, sadly. And in the meantime, Call to Arms 2. Use everything this round. Fortified DTs are a pain. And that should deal with 99. Yeah, there we go. Just gotta use the abilities a little early. And last round. Okay, how do we deal with this? I don't think this is gonna hit 1 million, sadly, but... Let's see if our defense right now can handle it, because right now we got... A lot of stalls, but that's not really useful for the bad the bad layer. Oh, uh, it's not gonna be fast enough, no. Screw it, more balloon air. Let's just get rid of this uh, ASAP. Oh, it's gonna get a little far. No, hold on. No. Let's try that again. Buy result Grand Sabos. Oh yeah, is that glitch still there? Ah well. We already got the bomb. Let's use it. Let me just relocate my little ice monkey. Sabo for the DTs, and there we go. DTs are about to be eliminated. Oh, ceramics are going really far. Do I need to get a panic blue gunner? Yes. Sadly, our juggernaut does not have enough reach. So it looks like the juggernaut, the ultra dog, is good for every round up to 100, and then... Yeah, versus the bats, pretty doo doo. Slow down again. In fact, hold on. Is this gonna be enough? I'm not sure. I can't tell if the juggernaut's gonna kill it or not. Alright, it is. Just barely though. And then Blue Solver to clean up the rest. And that's game. 100 rounds with this guy doing most of the work. And bomb shooter for our insta monkey. Makes sense. But yeah, that's the new uh juggernaut folks. The new bouncy juggernaut. Definitely should be worth using in a uh, cornfield and high finance too, but for hedge, definitely a good choice.